emotionally detaching from a toxic person. How do you even do that? So let's talk about it. So when you are trying to break away from, get away from, get a toxic person out of your life, you're going to hear people telling you all the time, go no contact. If you can't do that, go low contact. So what does that even mean? It basically means no contact at all. If you can go no contact, that means no checking their social media, no speaking to them, no texting with them, no keeping them on any avenue of contact with you, get them off of every app, every service, everything, everywhere they can reach you. It often means blocking them or if not blocking them, being able to not respond to them. For most people, if they're trauma bonded, it can mean blocking in order to get through that part. So it also means no checking on their social media. Like I said, no keeping tabs on them, no worrying about what they're doing, where they're going, who they're with, if they're with new supply, if they're not with new supply. If you have people coming at you asking questions and you know they're running back and telling the narcissist, cut those people out too. It means getting that person and that lifestyle and that whoever they are as far away from you as you can. If you cannot do that because of children or a job or sharing property, sharing something that you you need to have communication for, keep the communication about the topic at hand. Keep it about the children only. Keep it about, and by that I mean need to know information about the children, not how cute they are, or what they're doing, or where you guys went. That's personal between you and your children. Otherwise, it's just the need to know information that the other parent would need to know for purposes that serve the child's life or for legal purposes. So other than that, there is no contact. If it's about a business, you speak about the business only. You see what I'm saying? It's keeping the conversation as minimal as possible. And they're going to bombard you with a whole lot of extra stuff. And you just ignore all that and answer the need to know info only. Okay, so let's keep going. How else besides that can you emotionally detach from a narcissist? You're ready to do it. You can't stand this anymore. What do you do? Okay, so this is an area where group coaching may be a valuable asset for you. So if you need it, check out the information in the main description of any of my videos and it will link you to our group coaching program. If that's something you're not interested in, let's keep talking. Okay, so, and if you have any questions or anything that you think or feel, put them in the main comments because I love to hear from other people and it does help other people who are going through this to read the comments of others who are experiencing trying to break free from a narcissist. All right, so another thing is try to see the bigger picture, okay, and understand that that bigger picture is a reality. In other words, what I tell people all the time is you have to allow that narcissistic toxic person to be who they are. Stop making excuses. Stop saying yes, but they had a hard childhood. Stop all the reasons you understand why they are how they are. And just allow them to be what they are and look at that. Is that really what you want in your life? Is that really the person knowing what they are and who they are and how they are that you want interacting with you and you want having influence over you? Probably not. All right. So understand not only who they are and what they are, but see the bigger picture of what happened with them. See the manipulation, see the toxic behaviors, see how it hurts you, see how it influences you, how it causes you to change the way you are with yourself and your relationship with the world. Look at all of it and see that that is not something that you want in your life. So one way to do this is to try and see things from an outsider perspective. Try to look at the situation like you're watching a movie for a second or like look at other people's situations who are similar and relate it to yourself. Say, oh, I can see clearly in that situation how that person is really toxic for the other person. And then allow that to, when that is your reality, to be the reality so that you can get away from it. So for yourself, understand why you're attached, understand what you need, what where your personal history, past traumas, all of it is affecting your decision making today. See where it is not allowing you to make a choice so that you can heal those parts and begin to make choices. The thing is leaving a toxic person, leaving a narcissistic person is choice. It's very difficult. It has to be choice. It is, most of them won't leave you alone. Some of them do, okay, not all of them are going to continually hoover you, but it's not usually an easy 
transition between being with them and not being with them. And it has to be your choice to continue moving forward with your life. And so how do you get there? You can look at the things that have led you to where you are, what your needs are, and what you are trying to work through by being with that person, because there's usually something. And that's, again, another great place to talk with someone about it if you um, um, have a therapist or a coach or you can use our coaching for that purpose because that can shine a lot of light onto why you're making the choices you're making so that you can choose differently. Talking to other people who have survived this in their life can be valuable. So that is another another point to make here that finding peer support groups, finding support groups, finding others who have experienced this so that you're free to speak in a place where there's no one taking away your validity of what you're saying. There's no one who isn't validating you for your own experience in this. Okay, so here's a, here's an emotional tip. Allow those emotions. People want to stop their emotions. They don't want to feel the hurt of the trauma bond. They don't want to feel the grief of the breakup. They don't want to feel it. Of course, it's awful. So, but what that does is it can kind of trap you in that emotion. The harder you fight it, the more it's building up behind that, you know, that energy of fighting it. If you can allow it to flow through you, it is totally natural and normal and part of the process to go through a huge grieving and a huge sense of loss, even when you realize you don't like that person. Even when you, there's so much to it, right? There's layers. There's the, the life you thought you had, the relationship you thought you had, the person you thought you knew. There's all of it that you're grieving. So allow that grief, have some support, or learn tons of self-care things that help you personally get through that. And we'll have other videos on self-care later, but that's an area that um, we have to learn how to give to ourselves what we needed. So baby steps if you don't know how to do it. Go ahead and sleep in a little extra. Go ahead and take an extra long hot shower. Give yourself some food you like to eat, things like that that are nurturing like you would do for anyone else who is in that situation. Start doing it for yourself because the self-care is you showing yourself you matter even when your brain and your heart are all confused and feeling like you don't matter, right? So it's um, part of the process and we'll talk more about self-care soon. Stay away, as I said before, with the no contact, here's another point, stay away from their friends and family. I cannot tell you how many people I have talked to who have been hoovered in back to the narcissistic person through the family and friends. There are so many people, especially if you're dealing with a more covert and vulnerable type of narcissist who uses their uh, their their sadness, their emotions against people who plays the victim, who um, is sick a lot or threatens to harm themselves. These type of narcissists often have a whole group of people around them that are trying to help and who saw you as the person's main support. And so they're trying to get you back together as hard as they can so that number one, they don't have to deal with the toxic person who's, you know, doing all coming to them now for supply. And number two, because they, if it is truly an altruistic move, they don't understand narcissism. They don't understand they're being manipulated. They don't understand that you've lived in something incredibly toxic and you do not want to go back, nor should you go back. It's not good for you or the other person to be with them and allow that person to continue on with the toxic things they do to you. So Stay away from friends and family if you need to. It's okay. Let go of the idealized thinking, please. The narcissist isn't going to change. If they do change, it is into something more covert or more overt, depending on the situation. They will change behavior, but they will not become a healthy, attached, loving, kind human being with empathy intact. They just won't. Okay, so let go of that magical thinking. It's not real. It's not going to happen. They are what they are, they are how they are. And just like you wanna be accepted for who you are and you wanna be understood and loved for who you are, we have to see that they are who they are. It is respectful to do that and it is the kindest thing you can do actually, even though seeing that means that you can't be near them. Okay, yes, they have a good side.
right? Sure, most people do. They have a fun side or they have a side that makes you feel good. They have things they do that you think you can't live without. The way they hug you, the way they touch you, the intimacy, whatever it is that has you hooked, the good is as toxic as the bad because it is the thing that keeps you there. It's like the glue that holds it in place so that they can then run havoc everywhere else and cause all kinds of destruction and you're holding on to the good. Let go of it. Everyone has a good side, okay? Most people, okay, not everyone. Most people have a good side. You will find good again. You will find better in relief and relaxation when you're not around the constant intermittent reinforcement that they give and the love bombing and the devaluing cycle that goes on. Home in your space, in your life, get rid of all the reminders of this toxic person. Do a purge. Just clear it out. If you cannot bear to throw things away, box them up and shove them in a closet because the constant reminders of that person is not only triggering to your emotions because we perceive things through our senses, correct? Like we see something and our, we, our sense of sight gives us a memory. We smell something and that's the fastest way to the emotional, emotional life that we have to have remembrance, to have, you know, all of that. So if it's all over your house, that is going to make it feel like it's very difficult to let go of the person. Get rid of them, get rid of all of it. Get rid of photographs. If you can't get rid of them, store them away. Get rid of cards, gifts, all of it. If you choose to keep something, know you're choosing to keep it and know that it, it may trigger you and you may want to claim it for your own or do something to help yourself see that object as yours and not something that came from them. So when you're constantly thinking about them, when you're constantly checking in with your mind, I wonder what they're doing. I wonder what they're, I wonder if they found someone else. I wonder if this, I wonder if that. You got to start focusing on your own life. Focus forward, not backward. Focus on right now, okay? Focus on what's happening in your life right now. And if it's not something you want to have happening, change it. Find a way to make some change for yourself. Find a way to bring in and call in all the good things you want for your life and not be focusing back on what I call the hamster wheel of dealing with a narcissistic relationship with someone like this. So remember, when you're trying to heal from a toxic person, you are the focus now. You have spent the last however many years of your life with that other person as the focus. No longer. Now you get to be the focus of your own life and you get to make the choices that you need to make in order to have the life you want. So start small or start big. You choose, okay? But make the choice. Focus on you. Create new associations to think. So say there's a street corner that reminds you of this person or say there's a restaurant that makes you think of this person, whatever, whatever it is, start creating new associations. You may need to start small and you may need to bring a friend, someone that gets it, okay? But start making this world a place that you can do whatever you want without the triggers of that person infecting how you feel about things it can take time it can take you know effort and that is again something that might be good to talk through and have someone help you work through it but it, it's necessary we have to be able to we have to be able to move on right and to move forward and to have a life outside of this because you are not the sum of your trauma you are way more than that the trauma happened and you are experiencing what you experienced because of it, but there is so much more to you. And that's where we got to get to. So when you're feeling super triggered, when you're feeling like you just can't let this go, you can't let go of the person, start taking note of the reality around you. Start paying attention to all the things around you. Notice the room, notice the smells, notice the sights, notice the temperatures, all of it. Take note very simply of everything around you. See where in life, this is my favorite exercise, okay? Have a memory. If you can drum up a memory that has nothing to do with a toxic person and preferably nothing to do with any other person, just something from your life where you felt really great and like yourself, hold that memory a few minutes in your thoughts and see if you can get a feeling from it. If you get a feeling from it, notice, oh, my tummy's happy. It feels light and like dancing or whatever it is, okay? Then just start being open to that feeling in life and see if it is 
noticeable because it will come in tiny flashes. It may be a dew drop on a leaf or it may be the way the clouds are a certain day. It could be the tiniest things. It could be an interaction with another person. It doesn't matter. But when you feel that feeling of being yourself and being happy, notice it. So the more you can get into noticing your life and the things that drive you and your your excitement, your joys, that's when you start letting anything toxic that let me just say it vibes way too low for you, <laughs> right? Okay, that's it for today. Those are some tips on letting go of a narcissistic person and moving forward to being happy and joyful and experiencing life on your own terms. I am Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com. If you need anything regarding coaching or group coaching, check out the info in the main comments. Otherwise, I will see you back here later. Take care. Bye-bye.